Okay, I got this dog bed early COVID. It's a Pendleton dog bed, but I don't have a dog. I just enjoy having the option to sit on the floor anywhere that I want to sit on the floor. I want people to feel at home when they walk in. I want them to feel like they could hang here for hours and and I've had people hang here for hours and hours and I think when people walk in here too they're like an Asian person lives here not just because it's a shoes off home but like the little elements of like bamboo things and abundance of plants. My style is kind of neutrals, eclectic, cozy, homey, definitely inspired by nature. Having a very tiny space, there's only certain ways I could actually arrange the furniture I wanted to bring in here and part of how I planned and mapped that out was in my little journal I drew a bird's eye view of the layout of this place. I cut out tiny to scale like furniture and played like dollhouse to see how it would fit. What I love about the space actually are the, the mirrors that face the couch. I think it really creates a sense of a larger room, even though it's not that big of a room. I love my little couch area. This is where I sit the most and where anyone who visits probably sits. So I think having this be a comfortable area to hang out is really important. Having lived abroad in Japan for a few years, a lot of my experiences there and the way that homes are set up those things influenced me a lot. Imagine a place smaller than this, living in Tokyo, like micro apartments. I didn't have room for a couch. Now I feel like coming back to the States, it's very easy to live in a small space. That experience just kind of informed a lot of the way that I now consume and decorate and use space or realize like, I don't need this thing. And you know, Marie Kondo, like, thank it and let it go. <laughs> My best, piece of advice for small living is get furniture that can do more than one thing. This ottoman actually has a removable lid that when you flip it, it's a tray table, so it could be like coffee table, but if I have friends over and I need an extra seat, I can go back to the cushion side. Or like the table I have is um, a desk normally, but it's a butterfly table, so if I'm having a dinner party, I can open that up and seat more people. My favorite part of my apartment is probably this little sleeping nook. I, I love to wake up in this corner. The brick is so charming. It, it can be a little scratchy, but I think it adds a very cozy feel to it. And I have this collage that my older sister made. She's an amazing artist. In my adult life, I've come to really enjoy exploring my Taiwanese American heritage. And so by getting things from my family by nature, a lot of those have memories in them. This credenza that is at the end of the bed was also in my parents' office for years and years. That used to be like for bills and envelopes and stamps. And now it's like where I keep my clothes and my jewelry. I love my natural history corner. I call it my natural history corner because it's a collection of seashells and like weird natural objects. And most of them were pieces I found snorkeling and diving with my, with my dad and my sister. And now I have like a little display of all those memories. I think home is a place where you feel your safest and most comfortable. Home is a place where you feel like this is your world, all of your memories and your um, cherished things are here. At the end of the day, I love to come home, sit on the couch, maybe have a glass of wine or make a cozy little meal and really just unplug and enjoy being in this space. I think my advice to someone creating a home that you love is take your time. Don't rush and buy all new things that match just because you think it should be catalog perfect and matchy matchy. Bring with you pieces that you love. The personal side of picking each object for yourself and collecting through your travels, that is what makes it feel like you're building a home. <laughs>